Good morning. This is Saturday, May the uh, 2nd. I started to say 5th because we're going to talk about May the 5th today. But uh, it's the 2nd of May. I hope you're having a blessed day today. And I'd like for us to begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you. I pray that you'd bless us as we uh, look into your word today. May your word do its work. May your spirit do its work of convicting and challenging and equipping uh, us for renewal. In Jesus' name, amen. I want us to talk about today uh, Holy Ghost renewal. I call it that because, you know, we talk about revivals and it's lost the meaning, the true meaning. Uh, so many people come to me and say, we just need to have a revival. We need to have a fall revival. We need to have a spring revival. What they're talking about is having a special meeting where we bring in a, a special speaker and we have special services and we pray some and we listen some. And, and after it's over with, you know, that, that's when we really find out if we really truly had a revival from God is afterwards, two weeks afterwards, three weeks afterwards. What's the result, the long, enduring spiritual result of those meetings? And so many times there's no results except we just pat ourselves on the back, say we had a good meeting. Uh, when we go away from revival uh, then, and we don't talk about Jesus and it, our lives aren't changed, then uh, nothing spiritually happened, no matter what we say. When all we can talk about is the numbers and, and how good the music was and, and the preacher was really good and, uh, and all, and we had a good offering, if that's all we can talk about, nothing spiritual happened. I remember when I was a youth pastor in Maryland, one of the mothers of uh, two of the boys that were in our youth group, she said, I can always tell if something happens spiritually on the youth retreats that you take my boys on. She said, when they come home, the days following, tell me if anything spiritual happened in their lives. And that's the truth. The uh, proof is in the pudding, you might say. And uh, the proof is in the spiritual endurance after a meeting. But on May the 5th, next Tuesday, we've been asked to join together in prayer and fasting for a spiritual awakening in our country. And that's a, that's a, a dangerous prayer because we'll be praying for God to do whatever it takes to bring our country to its knees and back to Him. It's, a, it's an exciting prayer because it's something that only God can do. We can't do it. We can't produce it. We can't fabricate it. We can't program it. All we can do is wear out the altar on our knees, seeking God on behalf of our country. And so we're asked to do that next Tuesday uh, by a Baptist here in the state to join together and to seek God. Now, I'm going to say I hope we're already doing that because we don't have to wait till Tuesday. God could give us spiritual awakening today and before we even gather on Tuesday. But we're going to uh, follow the encouragement of the Spirit and spend the day of Tuesday in prayer and fasting. So in light of that, I'd like to share some thoughts out of Psalm 51, some very familiar verses, but some that we need to think about and think about what we're asking God to do to our country which really means what's he ask, we asking him to do to our lives, our families, our churches, and our country. So I'd like for you to take and turn into Psalms chapter 51, and we're going to begin with verse 1 uh, and skip through some of it all the way to the end. So as you open your Bibles to Psalm chapter 51, let's look at verse 1, and we see the need for renewal. It says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So before there can be spiritual renewal, there has to be the need for this renewal. 
And it's not that we see the evil in our country and the darkness in our country and we're concerned and we pray, which we should, but it's that our country, the people in our country, see the evil and they see the need, the spiritual need, and they begin to repent. So this is why it's a dangerous prayer because we're asking God to bring our country to its knees in repentance, to see the need for him in our country. And it's a great need, but that need is so foreign and unknown to so much of America. So we're asking God to do something special, that to reveal our sin to us that we might repent. Because if we don't know our sin, Paul says that's why the law was brought, that we might know our sin. If if the, America doesn't know the law of God and the requirements of God, they'll never know their sin. And so we're asking that they know their sin, that this is revealed to them so they'll repent and get saved. So revealed to the children of God, to the Christians, that we might repent. You see, we don't know the law of God anymore either. We just talk about the grace all the time. Yet we have to have the law to know our sin and our need for the grace. So we need to be reminded of God's holiness and righteousness. And then we will know our sin and seek the renewal. In verse 6, it says, Behold, you delight in truth in the inward being, and you teach me wisdom in the secret heart. It's not our actions. It's not what's on the inside. It's what the, on the out, um, not on what the outside. It's what's on the inside that God is after. It says, purge me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. You see, it's, it's the heart of the matter. It's the heart that knows our sin and is grieved and wants to change and seeks to repent. He says this is the inward being. It's the secret place. And he's talking about God cleansing us. We cannot change ourselves. We cannot do it in our own power and our own wisdom. We've tried and tried and tried. The Jews in the Old Testament tried and tried and tried. Can't do it. God has to do it. And we have to humble ourselves before him and realize that only God can do this. We can't bring this country to revival no more than we can bring ourselves to revival. It's up to God. And we need to seek his face and pray for this. In verse uh, 10, now we... The, David has talked about his need for renewal. He's talked about God has to clean, cleanse him. He can't do it himself. And then in verse 10, we find out he calls for it. He realizes it. He realizes God has to do it, and he begins to call. He says in verse 10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. David calls out to God and says, change me. Don't just forgive me, change me. Give me a new heart, a, a heart that you can mold in righteousness and holiness. Give me new desires in my life. David says, change me. He says, don't leave me alone. Don't withdraw from me, change me. He says, don't cast me away, change me. Restore me to the joy of my salvation, the joy of living in grace with God. And then when that happens and God brings that renewal and that joy in our hearts, then we'll respond to the renewal. We'll respond to the revival. The, pudding, uh, the, the proof is in the pudding. Weeks after he restores us, and renews us individually and prayerfully as a nation, the results will be seen because the response is in verse 13. He says, when you do this, when God does his work in our lives spiritually, he says, then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. 
Why is there not an outpouring of salvation in our churches? Because we need renewal. Why is this not happening? Because our hearts are cold and we need to return to our first love. He says, deliver me from blood guiltness, O God, O God of my salvation. And my tongue will sing aloud of your righteousness. Not only will we tell, tell transgressors, but we will sing unto the Lord loudly. It says, O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. If we would just open our mouths, if we have joy in our hearts and we're revived and filled with spirit, we can't keep it in. It's going to come out. We'll be singing all day long. We'll be praising all day. We won't have to be asked to. We won't have to wait for a time on the program to do it. And this is esteemed by God, this type of renewal, this spiritual awakening. Look in verse 16. For you will not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. He says, I'll give you whatever you ask for, God. He says, you will not be pleased with burnt offerings. He says, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. A humble spirit, one that is humble before him, a broken spirit that we realize there's nothing we can do but God. And we call out to God and he hears us and answers us. He says, I won't despise this kind of heart. The question is, as we go into May the 5th, even going into today, what kind of heart do we have? Is it prideful? Is it self-sufficient? Is it one that's held up by its own bootstraps? Or is it one that humbly says, God, I can't do this. God, I don't know what to do. As we look forward to May 5th, may we develop a heart of humbleness that he might hear and be pleased to answer us. Be blessed as you seek the Lord in your own heart and life today.